welcome to the video. In this video we're going to take a look at a little bit of technology called an oscilloscope and it's a great piece of technology if you want to troubleshoot remote control systems. Now this quad is one that we've already built on the channel and it's bristling with lots of different devices. Um, GPS, flight controller, a little CMOS camera, FPV transmitter, around the other side we have a radio receiver, we have an on-screen display and there are signals going around all of these electronic components actually talking to each other. And by default, the only kind of electronic bit of test kit that most of us would have if we have it at all is going to be something like that, a little simple voltmeter that can also measure resistance. And we'll try and use these probes to figure out whether or not the five volts is getting to the device and whether the grounds are connected and those kind of things. The challenge that you have with things like a voltmeter is it only shows you whether or not a voltage is there. It doesn't help you troubleshoot signals. So let me just talk about what an oscilloscope is before I actually show you what I've got here. So oscilloscopes are typically a great whacking piece of technology. When I first started to learn to be an electronics engineer I was using the style of oscilloscopes and they are quite big, large, bulky, heavy items with a cathode ray tube in the old days on the left hand side, loads of little knobs and switches and you had a couple of probes and you'd actually put them on the parts of the circuit and it would show the waveform of whatever it is you were trying to look at. So in a remote control signal we can look at the pulse width modulation. If we're looking at other things we can actually see the waveform coming out of things like a remote control receiver or from the GPS. When you need to see a waveform, it's worth its weight in gold. And there have been several times when I've been trying to troubleshoot something or help somebody, and by just being able to see what was actually going on with an oscilloscope would have helped me get to the bottom of the problem a lot faster. The difference between an oscilloscope and something like a very simple voltmeter like we've got here is that it actually shows you the voltage over time. So on the top we have a sine wave and on the bottom we have almost a square wave. So the top one is the kind of wave that you'd see if you were looking at a main supply alternating current and the bottom one is the kind of logic symbols that you'd see if you're looking at electronics which is exactly what remote control stuff is absolutely full of now. The reason for the video is I actually want to show you a fantastic little bit of technology. So let's just back to the desk and I'll show you the oscilloscope that I've been using. So believe it or not, this is actually an oscilloscope. Absolutely amazing. Small enough that it'll fit in the palm of your hand and it's been fantastic for helping figure out what's going on in some circuits. In fact, in a second I'm going to connect this up to a little servo tester and that little servo tester I'll show you the difference and changing waveform as you change the pulse width modulation which is what we use to move things like servos and speed controllers. I'll actually show you what that looks like on this little screen. We have a couple of inputs for two channels. It actually comes with a set of probes. Um, if you want more probes you can actually order them as well and um, it'll also allow you to freeze the image and it's charged from a USB port so it even has the battery and other things in it as well. Absolutely amazing bits of technology. This is one of those things that when you get it and you start using it uh, you kind of have your mind blown a little bit about how amazing it is. Uh, this is actually uh, a DS202 nano handheld oscilloscope. Uh, thank you very much to Banggood.com for sending me this to, uh, to have a play with. Uh, it's amazing that this thing will do the majority of what those big clunky 2000 pound oscilloscopes were doing back in the late 80s and early 90s. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to hook this up to the servo tester and I'll actually show you the pulse width modulation waveform and the fact that using these kind of devices you can actually see those signals. But just before I connect it up let me kind of show you what comes in the box. So uh, you get a box with a couple of trays, the top tray is the one that it comes in and the bottom tray then comes with the logic probe, it has a couple of different ends, it has this one 
which is like a super fine point, which is brilliant for checking traces on circuit boards. And it also comes with the kind with the um, spring loaded hook as well. So if you want to actually hook onto an output while you're changing things so you can see what it does to the waveform, you have that ability too. You can also order additional probes because it does have two channels. You can see here one is blue, one is yellow. We can actually disable um, channel B. There we go. So now we've just got the one blue line. So what we'll do is let me just connect this up to the servo tester. I'll actually show you this in action. So here it is connected as I described. So we have a little servo tester here that's connected up and powered from a battery. And we have one output of the tester connected to a little servo. And so as I move the servo tester, you can actually see the servo moving. It's changing the signal, but also on the screen, you can actually see the difference in the channel. So for example, right now where it's on the minimum, you, with the graduations as it is set, and apologies, you can't quite see exactly what we're looking at here, but that what that's showing me is that it is actually two and a half squares high. Each of the little squares vertically is two volts. So I know that that's just about five volts is the size of the wave. And that beautiful square wave is lasting just under one millisecond or a thousand microseconds, which is the smallest value. Now, as I increase it to its maximum value, you'll see the, that waveform, the length of it will double. So that's about halfway. And that is just over 1500, that's about 1550. If I go all the way to the top, there we go. There's 2000, so it's actually four squares long now. And the way it's set is each of those squares is half a millisecond, so that's two milliseconds or 2000 microseconds. So that's the top of the range of a servo movement, and that's the bottom of the range. And you can actually see the difference here. So not only can we see that the servo is moving, if I didn't have a servo, or I was trying to chase around one of the logic circuits within remote control, you can actually use an oscilloscope for. And this is the only device that will actually let you do that. So hopefully that demonstrates what this kind of thing will do. I, as you can see, this is the way I use it. I actually stick it in a little holder that's actually designed for an iPhone because it fits beautifully on the side of the desk. But the nice thing is now, it actually is something that goes in its little pouch in my kit when I'm out to go and help people sort stuff out or I'm actually troubleshooting a problem. I don't have to worry about having an oscilloscope or lugging a big couple of hundred pounds worth of equipment with me this little thing for 70 quid will do the majority of the job. So I just wanted to show this to you because there'll be those of you out there who have a bit of electronics background that might not have access to an oscilloscope anymore. Uh, but I would say if you're thinking of one, absolutely go and have a look at this. I've been really, really impressed. And the fact it's so small, portable and does such a good job has really just kind of blown me away. I do love this hobby. It is so fun when you come across something like this. Thanks very much to banggood.com for letting me try this out. There's a description in the link if you want to go and have a look at it. I'd recommend if you're going to order one, order another set of logic probes. Then you can use both channels because you can use one channel as a trigger to view the waveform on the other and all that kind of great funky stuff that we do with oscilloscopes. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.